this. My friend Jose says, you know, but Brother Van Meter, I don't understand what I'm reading. And, and they're actually at lunch eating hamburger. And Brother Van Meter says, put your hamburger down. So he already had, had a bite, put it down. And he says, look at that hamburger. Do you understand everything about the hamburger? Do you know who picked, you know who picked the tomatoes for that hamburger? Do you know who picked the lettuce? Or do you know, do you know everything about the cow that that meat came from? You know, what brand of bread is that? He said, I don't know. He said, exactly. You just take it in. You enjoy it. You take it. He said, just take it. This book, just take it. You know, if you don't understand something, just keep reading. You know, isn't God faithful enough to all of us individually to give us what we need? So that, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we've got shoes on our feet. Most of all of us got shoes on our feet. We have clothing. We have a place to live. He's provided that. Can he not provide our spiritual needs too? Daily. Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. Um, and, and then you go to um, John, chap John chapter 15, verse 11. Actually, verse 1. Verse 1. John 15, verse 1. You guys okay? It's okay, I guess. I'm not going to lie. I'm reading. <laughs> Um, I, am the vi I, am the, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch in me uh, that beareth not fruit, uh, he, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit, of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, and ye are the branches. We've read that we've heard this a lot. We'll really think about this. He that abideth in me. And the word abideth means to abode, to live, to dwell, to stay there. Not, not like going to McDonald's every once in a while. You, you, you go, you gotta eat something. Not that McDonald's is great for you, but it's good every once in a while. French fries. But abide in me, he says. Uh, for without me, ye can do nothing. Ye doesn't mean you. He's all of us. We can do nothing without him. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and he is, uh, and is withered. And men gather and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. If ye are in me, and my word, my words, his words, Abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so, so shall ye be my what? Disciple. I'm going to stop there. You could go on, I, I suggest you read the whole thing, but he's talking about if you're living in him, to abide in him, to, to stay close to him, you are his disciple. What's different between us and the world? We've got Jesus. But if we're not plugged in, we're, we're just you know, we're just like that fan without being plugged in. I mean, without the fan being plugged in, it's not going to get air. It's not going to blow on us. It's just going to sit there and collect dust. The blades get all dusty and stuff. And sad to say, today's Christianity, there's a lot of Christians with dust on them. They're not spinning for Jesus. They're not abiding fruit for Jesus. Uh, so what does it look like? You know, a lot of times we talk about the grace of God, God's grace. Let me tell you what true grace is in the book of Titus, chapter 2. Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Um, I was reading this just the other day, and man, it stuck out It stuck out to me. And uh, we use this on the street a lot to a lot of those folks that are uh, hanging out in churches for me um, that we met Friday night. And uh, they never read this verse. Chapter 2, verse 11, the book of Titus. It's one of those little books that a lot of people don't really know. It's, there. it's so small. It says, uh, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. This is what, this is God. If you want the true grace of God, this is it. Salvation that bringeth has appeared to all men. That, that salvation is Jesus. Okay? Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly, 
in this present world. Verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we might be redeemed from all iniquity and purified unto himself a particular people, zealous for good works. Verse 15. These things speak, exhort, rebuke with all authority, let no man despise thee. So, why do I say that? Why do I read this? Because it says to me to do this. To exhort, to rebuke, that no man despise thee. There's a lot of people that will despise that. Because there's a lot of people that don't want to live. They don't want to live godly. They don't want to live righteously. But if Jesus gave his life for us, folks, what do we owe him? We lived 33 years. Jesus... Jesus died. Jesus was younger than I am when he died. You think, man, that guy's just a kid up there. But Jesus is 33. He was a lot younger than me. So, Jesus says, he says that God gives us the grace which we're saved, take up a cross. He gives us the grace to live godly, to live differently, to live soberly, soberly, and righteously in this present world. And then the verse 14 talks that says that uh, we're particular people. Particular. I mean, uh, uh, uh. So, I'm going to sit to you with that word, what that word means in the Greek. Okay. Particular. Okay. So, so, we need to be living godly. We need to be living solely. And uh, we should be different. We should be, we should be different than everyone else. Says to be a special people, to be to go beyond usual. Usual. What we see day to day is just usual. Usual living. We should be go beyond that. It says that's what actually Greek means of that word, uh, particular. Uh, so we need to be living differently in this present age. So my encouragement to all of you today is not to come and stomp on toes, although. If if something that I said stuck a chord in you, like, man, I didn't hear this for, then uh, it wasn't me, it was God's word. Because you know what, there's a lot of things that I hear from my pastor to step on my toes, but you know what, it's good. It's really, it's good, it's good to have your toes to stepped on because it makes, it drives us to change. You know, in a April, April, April 24th, my pastor told, told me, he said, uh, good and faithful service. That's my prayer for you guys. You're going to be good because of Jesus. But are you following through with the faithfulness part? Are you faithful to get up in the morning? You know, when your mind's clear in the morning, to spend time in this word. Um, you know, a whole other study is, you know, you know, when the children of Israel came out of the wilderness, they came out of Egypt in slavery. And, but God provided manna for them on the ground. Little pieces of bread on the ground. And if they didn't get it by a certain time, the manna would melt away or the bugs would come and eat it up if they didn't get it for enough. You know, Jesus said, I am the bread that came out of heaven. Jesus said, I am the bread that came out of heaven. You know, we'll never hunger and thirst again spiritually as long as we abide in him. God is word. Uh, I, you know, set your alarm early. Say, God, help me get up early. So I'm not a morning person, but, but uh, but I'm working on it. You know, I set my little iPhone to go off and it dings and uh, I get up, pray, and read. I'm working on it. And uh, I encourage you, please, and will bless you. And you'll, your day will go better. You'll be friendly to people, kind to people, forgiving to people. You won't be holding anger toward people like that. But you'll be meditating day and night on everything that God said, like in the book of Joshua, chapter 1 finished that last week. It says, you just read it, read it to you, and I'll close up. I just can't stress this. I love the Word of God. I wasn't a reader in high school. I hated reading. I just struggled to just hang out and just be like the world. But this is what Josh, Joshua chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 8 says. This book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, from thy mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night.